selling your business to a key employee or family member can be one of the most rewarding paths of a successful exit from your business. And today we're gonna to talk about, is this path right for you? Hi there, my name is Ashley Michike. I'm the CEO of True North Retirement Advisors, where we specialize in exit planning for business owners. Transferring your business to a insider, whether that is a key employee or a family member, that's how we would define transferring to an insider. You could also lump in ESOPs in here, um, but I'm gonna leave those out because they're a lot less common than family member and uh, key employee transfers, whether that's a single person or maybe a group of two or three people. Um, it's actually the most common exit path that small business owners take. According to a 2016 study by the Business Exit Institute, they found that 67%, so two thirds of business owners, are choosing to transition their business to an insider. So today I'm gonna focus on what are those things that you should think about, the pros and cons, you know, why business owners choose this path, what are some of the challenges with choosing this path, and how you can address those challenges uh, to make it a smoother transition. First of all, let's talk about why business owners choose this path. It's, it's pretty attractive. So a, a big reason, and I think a big benefit that a lot of business owners actually don't think about is that when you choose this path, your exit from your business can be more gradual. So if, if you do some planning up front and you start this exit path and exiting your business, you can gradually back away from the business over a period of maybe five to 10 years. When you choose an insider and you're not selling to a third party buyer, a lot of times there's also an opportunity uh, to stay on as an advisor or a board member or to, to, to just stay actively involved in the business. Culturally, you're more likely to keep the business in the community, keep the employee culture intact, keep those relationships with clients or customers, vendors, just continuous so there's no disruption. Now let's talk about some of the challenges of transferring a business to an insider. Number one is, do your employees who you've identified as the next generation, are they capable? Do they want to own the business? I, uh, there's an entrepreneur um, acquaintance of mine who has likened entrepreneurship to a dumpster fire. So, <laughs> A dumpster fire, as you can imagine, it smells terrible, it's like out of control, and anyone with real sense would run away as quickly as possible from that dumpster fire, call the fire department, and let them deal with it. But when you're an entrepreneur, when you're a business owner, you're usually one sitting there with like the garden hose and the bucket of baking soda trying to put this thing out all the time. So, you know, there's lots of headaches with running a business. Even though entrepreneurship is glorified in our culture, um, it, it still takes a very special kind of person to want to and have the, the uh, qualities to successfully run a business. The other challenge of transferring a business to an insider is that often they have no money. You know, if your business is worth, let's say you have a business that's worth $3 million, how is that person going to come up with the money to, to buy your business? We really wanna address the financial aspect, so I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into that and how we can actually address it. We're gonna talk about selling, bonusing, and gifting of stock in order to transfer uh, ownership over uh, you know one time or over a period of time to the next generation ownership. Each of these options have different tax consequences, different risks for you as the departing owner in terms of ensuring that you get paid, and then also um, different amount of burden on the behalf of the purchasing employee in, in paying for their ownership stake really really important that early on before you make any decisions about what you do 
that you talk with your CPA, make sure that your CPA is experienced and understands all of these transfer methods, and that you also talk with it with your attorney also who um, hopefully understands all of these methods so they can uh, advise you appropriately as which one makes the most sense. One of the more popular methods for transferring ownership to a next generation owner, particularly when it's a key employee, a non-family key employee, is when you uh, sell stock in the company. And usually this is done through a promissory note and it's done gradually over a period of time. So maybe an initial buy-in would be 10 or 20 percent. And since that purchasing owner probably doesn't have the money to pay cash for 10 to 20 percent of ownership in the business, we structure that with a promissory note where you as the business owner get paid back for the, the purchase of those shares over time. And typically, now that this new incoming owner has a stake in the business, they're gonna use their ownership distributions to then repay the promissory note. Um, typically, this is structured over maybe a five to seven time period as far as repayment schedule. So again, if this is something that is attractive to you, five to seven years is a long time and especially depending on how much you want to transfer the business to how many people and over what time period, we really have to plan in advance and put this into place long before you want to leave the business completely. Option number two that's very popular for family transfers is gifting of stock. So typically what happens here is a child or another family member is gifted a certain percentage of ownership. And again, a lot of times this happens gradually over a period of time where we maybe start with 10 or 20% ownership and then we gradually gift more and more uh, over time. Now where the gifting of stock becomes problematic is with taxes and the gift tax exemption. So the cap of what, if you're married, the cap of what you can gift in 2019 is $30,000. So if your business is worth say $3 million uh, and you can only gift $30,000 without any tax consequences, that's problematic. We just gave away 1% of the business. So it would take you like 100 years to, to transfer 100% of the business under, under that situation. One of the things that makes it a lot easier to, to gift stock uh, and gift more than $30,000 in, in 2019 or in any one year, uh, whatever that cap is, is that you can eat into your lifetime unified tax credit where basically you can gift more than that 30,000 cap, but it's gonna potentially have some estate uh, tax consequences um, and things like that. So very important, the, the takeaway from this is that if you wanna gift stock in the company to a family member, it is a viable option, um, but you want to make sure that whoever you're working with as your attorney understands how to structure this so that it doesn't create potential tax problems for you or your estate. Okay, so here's how the bonusing of stocks work. It's, it's a little bit complex, so I'm just gonna give you an overview. You bonus the amount of shares you wanna get. So let's say in year one, you wanna give 10% of ownership to one of your insider employees. You give that stock as a bonus, and then you give an additional bonus of cash, which would then help the employee pay the taxes on those ownership shares that they were just bonus. Um, and what this does is by structuring it this way, you actually get a tax deduction as the business owner when you bonus out the, the shares this way. So when you run the numbers on it, when you look at the tax implications, a lot of time it's, it's, it's a very tax efficient way to transfer ownership of the business, which makes it a very compelling strategy to consider. How do you know if a transfer to an insider is the right decision for you? This is something that in the exit planning process, we can't spend enough time here. It, it, it's so important to identify the right successor. So here's what I'd like to offer to you today. If you want to know if an insider transfer is right for you and talk with somebody, an objective third party to talk with you about whether or not this makes sense for you and your business. 
schedule a free exit planning strategy call. 20 minutes, we'll talk about questions, and I'll ask you questions that you've probably never been asked before in order to help you identify if this is the right path for you. My name is Ashley Michike. If you like this video, won't you please like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully you found some value from this. If you did, please come on back. We put up videos on YouTube every, we do three a month, and two of those videos are geared specifically to exit planning and help you navigate the exit from your business. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you next time. Subscribe down below. Bye now.